Yes Have Some Podcast is brought to you by Carnivorous Creations, your one-stop shop for all of your proton pack building needs. If you're in the market for a proton pack, head to carnivoruscreations.com. That's carnivorous with a K. You're going to find aluminum motherboards, resin parts, fiberglass shells, and a whole lot more. Find them on Facebook at Carnivorous Creations or head straight to carnivoruscreations.com. Remember carnivorous with a K and get started on an authentic screen accurate proton pack. Uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. I don't want to grow up. I'm 41. You want some Jurassic Park. Now playing the PSW. Echo goggles with Echo Bomber. Neutron of Blaster and Water Sapper. Each sold separately. From the corner penthouse of Spook Central, all the way to Star Killer Base, this is Yes Have Some Podcast. Do I? Yes Have Some. Yes, have some. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags. The only place in the multiverse where you can love the book, hate the movie, but still buy all the toys. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi mask. A what? Please remember to hold on to your butts and get ready to get stressed. With your hosts, Craig Goldberg, Abigail Gardner, and Jacob Walsh. Hello, everybody. What? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 108 of Yes, Have Some Podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg, and I'm feeling good tonight. I'm with Abigail Gardner. Hey, guys. Jacob Walsh. Stressed. Whoa. Jake's got stress already, man. That's cool. Jake, why are you so stressed? You want me to you want me to drop some like impromptu stress on you guys really quick? Um, I didn't. I didn't prepare for this. I didn't this. ask for it, but yes. I'm going to do it. Um, I finished reading a Stephen King book today. Okay. okay. Me too. It's... Me too. <laughs> oh, oh, Craig, did you finish the first chapter of The Gunslinger today? Mm-hmm. No, I, I read the back of The Stand again. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to get... <laughs> <laughs> You've got a pretty good in... grasp on that book, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I kind of understand. Like, So basically what Loosely. it is... Loosely... Is... There's words, yeah. and then they form sentences, and then it's like it's a spout like characters. I think it's like a competition where whoever sits down first loses. It's a yes. um, not it's, funny. Okay, no, it was. Hey, funny. no, Jake, fuck you, dude. I just dude. did the same thing to you that you did to me last week because at one point I made a joke and nobody reacted, and I got so mad. Mm. So Whoa. no. I what remember joke was it? it was because you were talking about how you think out. about a lifeguard. You're like, yeah, I always just think about the Ghostbusters lifeguard. That's not what it was. It was something about Dragon Con. No, it wasn't. And Jake and I were like, that's dumb. Nobody thinks about that's that. That's not what it was. I'll, I'll tell you what it was. If everybody could go back into the archives, travel with me to one week ago. I'm trying to think of what it was. Episode now. 107. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the person yeah, I know. Who, like, you're stalling. I can I, tell. I retroactively get mad about something, but have no, nothing to back it up. Like there was that one My time feelings were hurt. You did a thing. Jake, I thought your stand joke was funny, man. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's all right. Hey. Well, we'll just, just edit in some laughter from you guys. That'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Well, we can just laugh now and put it. All right, ready? One, two, three. Oh. Yeah. I still don't think it was that. Okay. <laughs> that was, that was, now we all know what Abby's fake laugh sounds like. Do it one more time. Very. Oh. Yeah. God, the energy is good. Jake, what uh, what uh, Stephen King book did you finish? Today? Hey, you know what? I finished reading uh, a book called Rage. Um, oh. can I spoil this book for you guys? Are you, yeah. are you like, is this on your list, Abby? Rage? Yeah, but I'm way behind Jake, so just go ahead. Uh, isn't it I'm called spoil The Rage? Book. Spoil that, Carrie. Sh- <laughs> it yeah. is not. Uh, so this, this is a book that he wrote, um, when he was doing the Richard Bachman thing. It's very short. It's like 200 pages. Um, and it is the reason that like the Bachman books are a little hard to get because, um, uh, he took it out of uh, print. You can't like you can find an old copy of it, but they don't print it anymore. It's okay. not. He took. And um, <clears throat> the reason he did that is because it's about a kid who, um, I don't know, does some like school shooting or something. So oh, a little I've, bit. Been, I've been wanting to read it for a while. Um, over the, the last few days, I picked it up, flew through it. Um, the first part of the book is very good. And like I remember like I started reading it and I was like, they should make a movie of this. Like this would be good. But also like here's here's the I'm just like full disclosure. This is probably fucked up. I don't maybe we'll edit this out. I don't know. 
It's a battle school shooting. We hey, I just got excited. I shit. No, nothing. Keep, keep going. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what you say. I don't I like care it what more. you say. It's staying in. <laughs> so, f- f- like right off the bat, the like the the main guy is like he's kind of funny. He's like you're kind of rooting for him, and I think that's part of the reason uh, Stephen King was like maybe this book should come should should come down mm-hmm. because it's not quite he's not quite made out to be the bad guy that he he probably should be, but also. The thing that is weird and stresses me out about it is that I finished the book today and um, most so he 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 does kill a few people immediately, like two teachers get get shot mm-hmm. pretty, pretty early in. Mm-hmm. The rest of the book is him like in a classroom, kind of holding a class hostage. Nothing else ever happens. Nobody else dies. A student never gets killed Mm -hmm. and it's basic and it's also weird because the the entire class that's in there with him don't seem very um scared they're like joking with him and they they're telling stories back and forth with him through half of the book there's like one kid in the class who's like guys he's got a gun (laughs) he's killing people but like it it keeps building and building and, and you're like when you're reading something that you're like, oh, this guy, you know, Stephen King yeah. took this out of his, you know, something's going to happen here. And then nothing. You want it to be more fucked so up. I get 22. done and I'm like, I get done and like, it's like you kind of feel like shit because you're like, he didn't kill any of those fucking kids. <laughs> They're all alive. <laughs> those um, kids got off easy. Oh, um, right. So uh, it kind of makes you feel like a bad person. But also it's like the book would have been better if something, you know. Hey, listen, happened. dude, you got that itch. You got to get it scratched. If yeah. I if I stop and thought about it every time I felt like a bad person, I wouldn't get through my day. Exactly. Mm-mm. Um, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, usually with that kind of story, it's going to like escalate, right? Like you wouldn't want to watch a, like a, in scream, like, uh, you know, they, they kill, uh, Drew Barrymore and her boyfriend in the first mm-hmm. scene. But what right. if the rest of the movie was just, just nothing. Yeah. You have like rising action and then falling yeah. action. You got it doesn't climax. like, it doesn't like if it. you, it, if you go like to the Wikipedia page and you read about this book and another reason that, um, you know, Stephen King thought it would be best to take it out of circulation is because it was this book was found like in the bag or the lockers of multiple school shooters. You got a fucking hold, which is kind of mind boggling to me because there's no like act. There's not a whole lot happening in the book, you know, so it's weird <laughs> to me that a school It part of me is like maybe because the kid in the book kind of comes off as cool. And, he, Dude, and he's like, I'm looking he's at the got cover. Like a good comeback. Jake, he's got a good comeback to everybody. And I'm like, maybe that's cool. why all these school shooters like gravitated towards it. It's not because he it's not because they killed a fucking bunch of people because he doesn't in the book. Yeah. Yeah. It's because of the like the coolness factor. And I yes, I, I'm looking at the cover of the book and the guy looks very cool. <laughs> he looks he's got so his head cool. on his like hand. he looks like um <laughs> on the so cover. Cool. He looks like um. I'm not advocating anything, but I kind of want to read this now. Although, after like, you uh, telling me that whole plot, I don't want to read it, so he, I take that back. He looks like it's, James, it's, James Abby, it's Franco short, and most mm-hmm. of it's, it, it's a short book, and most of it is like a, a pretty good read, so I, I would I would say go for it. Do you guys have, like, I didn't chime in on the conversation until Abby started talking about the pictures on the cover. And you're like, no, I like that picture. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, cool, I can get behind this, because like, you can see <laughs> Now it. that's one that I can see and understand. Uh, well, cool. Well, that's <laughs> always fun to finish a new book. Congratulations. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Um, I sorry uh, that not enough people died. <laughs> no, I do understand. That's why Jake <laughs> loves Titanic. Jake's here's Jake's <laughs> yeah. five five minutes of Titanic. J- Jake's review of Titanic. You know, I wish I wish the other half would have bit the dust too. You know, <laughs> um, I wish the shark. I wish all the sharks in the Indianapolis would have showed up <laughs> and attacked Jack and Rose. I <laughs> should. Uh, that would have been. That would have been to that. That would have been a lot better. Imagine how different Jaws would be if it was it wasn't Quint. It was Leonardo DiCaprio. Dude, what if it was Quint instead of Leonardo DiCaprio? They would have made it out. Oh yeah. If so Quint was on the Titanic, yeah. Quint With probably Rose. was on the Titanic. He was downstairs doing like the jig. <laughs> it's yeah, probably, it's his yeah. fault. It was. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll catch that iceberg. <sighs> All right, we've okay. crossed so many it's lines. Good. Already. It's good. Well, now. welcome everybody to Yes Have Some. That was some impromptu stress. Another impromptu piece of stress. We don't have to uh, focus on this uh, too long, but we are all toy collectors here, 
And uh, Jake brought it to our attention right before we went on the air, uh, or press the record button, I should say. Yeah. NECA, our favorite toy company, NECA, uh, who their main uh, retail distribution was through Toys R Us, and obviously Toys R Us is uh, no moss, no, not doing well. Uh, at least here in the <laughs> United States, I think that they're not feeling so well. Yeah. They're not feeling yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to go, Mr. Stark. <laughs> Sorry, Jeffrey. Wait, has anyone corporate, done that yet? Corporate greed has, uh, I think, yeah, I think some of that. The Toys R Us. Anything that is discontinued has gotten the Thanos Everybody treatment. Everybody got the Thanos oh, fucking treatment. Fucking meme, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, NECA is going to be exclusively, not exclusively, but they're going to have a, a space in Target. Every Target, it says every Target on the NECA Instagram is going to have a shelf mm-hmm. full of NECA yeah. products. Uh, Some NECA stuff. Which is going to be great because immediately, you know, day one, the complaints are going to come in. Well, they didn't have what I was looking for. This bullshit. Or, yeah, well, they sold sure. out of everything. I hate collectors. I hate scalpers. Guys, toy collectors, can we just talk about how toy collectors, all of us included, are the worst? Well, it's like built into our DNA to analyze things and to look for imperfections and to like, it's... it's that happened to me this or week. We're cranky and needy. I, guys. As a people. It, here's a story. I, uh, I, I haven't bought any of the new uh, Diamond Select Ghostbusters 2 figures. I've kind of been holding off because I really do want to put, you know, the whole Firehouse diorama together. But I just haven't picked any up yet. I was at the store the other day at the comic book shop, Oxford Comics here in Atlanta. And I bought the Vigo because I just wanted it. It looks good. It comes with the Ghostbusters 2 sign. That's the like, whole reason. I was just, you know what? I want, I want this. Uh, and then I got home and I noticed there was like a weird... Uh, Paint splotch on, on Vigo's on forehead. On Vigo's mm-hmm. beautiful forehead. Yeah. You know how Vigo, you know when you look at Vigo. You know smooth skin. You know when you look at Vigo and you're like, oh, that he's a perfect looking man. Yeah. Um, so, it ha- so I had to bring it back and I felt like such a douchebag because I was like, hey, can I trade this in? This is like a weird paint splotch on it. Yeah. Um, you had to call first and they were like, uh, maybe. <laughs> we'll <laughs> think about they, it. They almost <laughs> denied me. Yeah. They were almost like, no, <laughs> you can't. You know, Vigo. Uh, Bring it in. We'll look at him. We'll think about it. <laughs> we'll take a look Let's at take him. Take a look. Uh, what I did was I walked up to the guy behind the counter and I said, "I want you to know everything you are doing is bad." <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's cool. NECA is going to be in Target, and uh, that's going to be the I think August third. So just a couple weeks, you'll be able to go to Target, and hopefully we can all buy that new uh, Pennywise figure yeah. that just came yeah. out nice. uh, mm-hmm. because. Oh man, I'm just Dude, excited. I'm hoping that like this will branch out Target's toy collection or toy section to have an adult collectible type section. You know how Toys R Us did? Like yeah. if there is NECA in stock and if it sells well, like maybe there will be more. And I bet it will sell well because yeah. like yeah, I mean we can all buy stuff <clears throat> because online. a lot of people don't have a lot of people like who don't like uh, you know Toys R Us was my I know like you guys are in Atlanta and you have a few. You have more places you can go to, but like I don't have any comic book stores or specialty, you know, collector stores here. Toys R Us was basically the only place I could get NECA. They have a few things at FYE, they have a few things at Books a Million, but like it's gonna do good because a lot of people don't have access to NECA, period. Oh, yeah. dude, you know what else Target has that none of these stores, including do Toys R Us, have? What? Clearance sales. Oh, you're like Target just get Target like doesn't even know what to do with itself. I won't it even buy so like I collect Star Wars Black Series. I don't even buy them. I never pay full price because I just like you see them starting to stock up. And I just know like in the next three weeks, those are going to be like eight bucks a piece. You look at the Black Series. You're like, ah, two, looks like you guys have a few too many. I see you yeah. get, like excited about a lot it. of Lando's building up. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter people didn't like that movie you like I'm, taunt the whole section yeah I go up to yeah I walk up to the people at <laughs> looks Target looks like Target ordered a few too many again you Look, cutting promos yeah <laughs> yeah I go up like to the guys it. like so I'm gonna like wait bad, six more weeks to buy like it. a bad Scott Hall so you hey yo <laughs> <laughs> so you got Alan Grant figures <laughs> 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 well <laughs> you think I want to play with those, Chico? I do, but I'm waiting till they're on sale. Wow. And the guy's like, hey, I don't even work here. Like, oh, sorry. sorry, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that'll be good. Um, as uh, Dude, I want you to cut Toy Store promos from now on. We need to do that as a segment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dude, what we need to do is um, Ric Flair is going to be at Dragon Con. We need to get him to cut a promo about 
how like modern wrestling figures suck compared to the old, like the old uh, Hasbro figures or whatever. Yeah, well, he's super compliant and easy to yeah. talk yeah. to. I'm sure we can get him on. <laughs> I'm sure we can Wait, just get hey, him to do that. Hey. He was, he was, uh, he had, you know, uh, enough of a mind to do that weird rap video. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, the I'm drip? sure he, that one? I'm sure we, we should, get him, we should get him to cut us a yes, have some promo. Yeah. I, mean, I think he might be down. Yeah. But what would it be? We're, are we styling and profiling? We're not limousine riding. Yeah. Just, just let him say whatever he wants. As long as he says, yes, have some in there. Yeah. We we need. To I want to get him in Jake's car. I just, I want a video of Ric Flair driving the Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, like going up. Do you have a moonroof <laughs> popping out, or at least hey, the nose? Like Ric Flair knows how to drive. Hold on. Normally, they don't let the dinosaurs drive the cars. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm out. I'm leaving. George is out. Anyways, um, <laughs> so listen. Before we move on, uh, we kind of had a big announcement last week, guys. We, we? announced. Yeah. We did. Yeah. In between, oh. you guys not laughing at my jokes. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we did. We decided to do <laughs> things. Um, oh, okay. We launched the Yes Have Some Patreon page last week. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who has signed up already. Um, mm -hmm. We went over it in complete detail last week. We're not going to go through the whole spiel right now, but it's patreon.com slash yes have some. We've got five tiers, mm -hmm. including uh, as little as $1 a month you can contribute and help us uh, basically keep the lights on, uh, pay for our... <laughs> Our hosting costs and you know like we always say we do this uh the number one reason we do this is because um well we just have nothing else to do we're very bored mm -hmm. uh no we do this because we love it and we have a lot of fun doing it and there's a uh, some financial commitment to podcasting and running a website and running a youtube page and all that kind of stuff so uh it's patreon.com slash yes have some you can contribute there's a one dollar five dollar ten dollar tier twenty five dollar then the fifty dollar tier which is the uh Yes, have some collectors club, which we're going to be talking about. Yeah, you don't just contribute; you get stuff. Well, that's back we from wanted us. to do something different. We didn't want it just to be like, "Hey, you give us money and Actual we say thank stuff. you." Like, we wanted to give back and give you guys opportunities to get some cool stuff. Um, to let everybody know, uh, for the ten dollar tier and above, you do get two minimum of two bonus episodes a month. The first bonus episode will be going up next week, uh, and we'll have more details on that soon. Uh, it will be a separate feed from the Yes Have Some feed. You'll be able to put into your, your podcast app or download and get it uh, right on your phone. And we're going to have mm -hmm. a lot of fun. I'm very excited about yep, the Yep, it's uh, all about episodes. economics. It's going to be a good episode. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What we're going to do... Numbers. Yes, we're going to actually Stocks. break down all of our patrons and what they contributed and then try to break down like what their worth yeah. is as a human Yeah, being. to us. It's right, going to be fun. Right. Based it's on gonna that be so dollar fun. amount. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's going to be You're fun. You're going to learn a lot. Yeah. And after the uh, economics portion, we're mm -hmm. going to – you know how they always make volcanoes and like science fairs in high school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to yeah. do that, but it's just audio. So oh, it's more fun. Oh, cool. So like no yeah. talking, just it's, some like muddy – Yeah. It's really experimentation is what yeah, we're going yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to enjoy it. It's more of like an art installation than anything else. It's kind of envision it in your head. Right. So give us your money. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, God, <laughs> we are earning these dollars. Yes. People are unsubscribing as we're <laughs> uh, So cool. So, the audio uh, volcano? Uh, all of the tiers do come with a personal thank you. So we wanted to go ahead – and uh, give those shout outs right now to everybody who we call these early adopters in the tech industry. A lot of people don't know I work in the tech industry. I'm going to just brag for a second. I work in the tech industry. Yeah. All right. And if anybody can guess where I work, it's not that hard to figure out. Are you trying to get more radio silence from Jake and I? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> now, now we'll talk about Craig's tech company and technology. Um, anyways, personal thank yous. Right now, yes, I have some Patreon. Thank you so much to the following folks. Wes Adams, Jeffrey DeGamarino. DeGamarino? You got it. It's one, it's one flow thing. Also, he, uh, Jeffrey was one of our first listeners. Like yeah. he was, a, he's been a supporter. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's so an thank awesome you to, <laughs> thank you to him. Got a nice Star Wars Black Series collection and a nice collection of cats. He so. does have good yeah, cats. Yeah, sure. He has Very true. Uh, so thank you to Wes Adams, Jeffrey DeGamarino, Bobby Graham, Philip Oliver, Jamie Knowles, Jason Stepp. By the way, are we supposed to be giving out last names? Well, we did. We are doing it for the first time uh, now. Who cares? Maybe, are, yeah. yeah. Matthew Reed, Mark Yule. Thank you to all of you. And of course, Julia Hansen. Julia Hansen, hey our girl. latest patron. Thanks, and uh, Mark Yule, a personal friend of mine. Thank you. Former bandmate. And then uh, Micah Gardner. 
Whoa, my brother. Your brother. He was our a, first patron. He was our first patron. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So thanks, wow. family. God. Thank you to all Let's of get you. him on the show. Yeah. We should. He's funny. He's a scientist. Yeah. He could help us with our economics episode, probably. Definitely. He knows a lot about soccer. Oh, good. So we're all good. set. Yeah. We're good. Um, in all seriousness. No, I wouldn't be who I am today without my brother. I should say that. he's He was everything cool and he showed me everything cool. So I love him. I wouldn't be anything without Jacob Walsh. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank Jake? You. Jake's like, I don't care. I'm myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't owe anything to anybody. I Jake said, looks in the mirror for inspiration. Said, thank you. What more do you want from me? I don't know. I can't. What do you want from me? <laughs> better the first time. Uh, so anyways, thank you to all of our uh, patrons. We will be talking about our Patreon page and all the cool stuff. We'll be posting uh, pictures of all the stuff we're sending out, including the YHS newsletter and things of that nature. And of course, the YHS VHS Club, which is the $25 tier. We're going to be doing a commentary and sending our $25 tier members and above vintage copies of a VHS movie and uh, we're going to do a commentary. I'm very much looking forward God, to that. God, I'm so excited. As a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000, I'm just really excited to do a commentary, do a movie. I'm excited. I'm so, excited let's too. Do it, guys. All right, cool. So, um, more notes. Last week we talked about Robocop returning uh, mm -hmm. in a brand new film called Robocop Returns. Um, at that point of recording, Abby had never seen RoboCop. Abby, do you have yes. any news for the for the YHS Guys, family? Guys, YHS family, I watched RoboCop, and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it well, we watched it over two nights because Craig is sleepy, um, which I was upset about because I wanted to finish it all in one viewing, and I totally could have done it even though I had to work the next day. I was like. You I don't have to wait for like. Here's the thing. No, I've seen RoboCop 45 times. Well, part of the, it's like a mutual experience. You have to mm -hmm. enjoy it together. Yeah. And then, like, and what's make cool is memories. after like now that we watch that one, um, we'll watch the original next week. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's my joke. That's funny. We're just, we're just <laughs> dropping bombs. Uh, what, Abby, what do you think of uh, RoboCop? I was uh, well. Let's let me travel back to the first couple scenes of watching it. I knew I liked it when. You enter like the locker room scene and you see like male ass and then like you see like boobs and dick and it's like, I don't think you see dick, but like it's just like, Abby it's very dick. gritty and like Abby awesome saw dick. and it's equal parts. Like everybody's showing everything and it's tough. It's futuristic and they have like males and females in the same like situation, the same locker room, which I'm just like, this is like a really cool projection of the future. And I like cyberpunk and I love, what's the guy that played Robocop? He is handsome. Peter Weller. Yes. Peter Weller. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Dude, that movie's tough. It has really well-written characters, really good lines. It gets a little bit like over the top, but it's like, I was able to eat dinner while watching this movie because the violence, it's like, it's not gross. It's like just good. And it's, it's a lot of blood, probably more blood than most human beings have, but it's also the future. So who knows? Um, What's the future past? It's like future blood. Yeah, in the future you have more blood. It's a thing we don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I love the movie. I totally wish I'd seen it a long time ago. I'm a fan of future blood. Um, mm -hmm. One thing, I always forget that uh, the dude, Red, from uh, yeah. from that 70s show is the yes. main villain. Right. And his voice, he kind of has this high-pitched voice or this kind of like weird like back of your throat way he talks and he sounds a lot like Bill Hader doing a character throughout this movie. Oh, so, weird. So so there's times where he's on screen and you're supposed to take him serious and he's like, ah, I'm gonna get ya. Yeah, see? <laughs> you're like, I'm like, oh. Ah, I'm gonna just, hurt you, see? He's like, ah, what's the problem here? <laughs> yes. When he walks in, um, it's me. there's that <laughs> scene where he goes into like, uh, what's uh, the Miguel Ferreira, he's the, uh, he's kind of the, the the ass the, yeah. the main asshole who he's a really good actor and it's really sad he passed away uh, last year uh, oh. he had throat cancer dang he's, he was uh, in Twin Peaks he was in Twin Peaks and he was also George Clooney's first cousin. he's like an asshole but you kind of root for him and yeah. feel bad for him but anyway so he's with these like two girls and they're like naked and they're doing coke and like just doing like so eighties just having a big powder party and then uh the the dude uh, red. I'm gonna call him Red. Red walks in and he goes, "Moo, leave, bitches." He says, yeah. leave, bitches. Uh, "It's just funny. It's just funny." But then that scene's fucking crazy. Like he blows. You could, him you up. could, yeah. You could say what you just said about any scene in RoboCop. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it's fucking nuts. And then it's oh. fucking crazy. What about that boardroom scene with ED two hundred nine? Oh, the beginning. The like the first fuck. part of the movie. Oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love when ED two hundred nine. Um, is that what it, I think that's what it was called? Uh, 
the when, stop motion the stop yeah. motion fight with robocop on the staircase yeah. is yeah 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 you know what's Dude. weird um watching that movie that movie was only so that movie came out in 87 terminator 2 came out in 91 so that's a four-year difference but they were probably filming and produce like pre-production on t2 and like 89 and 90 the and it's crazy because in in 87 they were using stop motion and that was like the the top of the line technology and then obviously all the CGI and, and VFX st- stuff started with T two. Um, is there it, not is there not some stop motion in T two? I'm pretty sure there is. Ah, uh, there is might it, like is it is it like some some of the times where he's like looking at his hand is stop motion? I think. It Am might, I making this up or maybe we could I could I don't think it. it's stop motion. I think it's like early CGI, but but just super early. I got but, you. It is crazy. It's that stop. Like, you always read about it because we talk about Jurassic Park a lot. Um, they were going to do stop motion for the first Jurassic Park. Like, how much different? Like, here's a fun thing to think about. Would anybody care about Jurassic Park today if that movie was stop motion? It'd be different. Like, yeah. it'd be it'd be fun, but people it, it, would, it would still care because, be different. but it would not be the groundbreaking thing that it is that like has led people to join up and do like work in the industry because there, I don't think there'd be five like, Jurassic yeah. Park movies at this point I think there would have been another dinosaur franchise mm-hmm. or they would have just remade Jurassic Park or the Lost World would have just been a much better movie mm-hmm. I guess the world will never know we'll never know um, <laughs> so anyways uh, I guess Robocop 2 and 3 are on, on the docket now huh yeah. yeah we bought the box set so yeah got the Blu-rays it's weird on Amazon Prime there's all these other Robocops I think they're fan films there's like 10 of them I'm gonna watch all of them. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah. But like Jake said last week, none of them are gonna be better than the uh, Georgia Ghostbusters episode. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an asshole here, Craig, all and right. correct you. Um, here we go. T2 does stop have motion. stop motion, and it also had it. It also it has a good bit of animatronics. Okay. okay. Um, mm-hmm. but there, there, I, I, it doesn't say there's a lot of stop motion, but mm-hmm. uh, I think. For, for small things they had yeah. to use it but it looks like they were able to do a lot of animatronic stuff and didn't need a whole lot of cgi right mm. for yeah. except except for like you know obviously except for stuff like the the t1000 you yeah, know I think changing the, changing from something to, to something else obviously okay. but yeah um i think most of the yeah the t1000 stuff was obviously that was that's where you see a lot of the the cgi stuff. yeah mm-hmm. yeah for sure um so. It's definitely groundbreaking and head and shoulders above like RoboCop with the effects. I'd yeah, say. yeah, it's a good shampoo. So <laughs> cool. I love I love shampoo jokes. Um, <laughs> cool. And moving on, before, uh, you still yeah, you just got I'm it. Still going. Yeah. Really? Well, when I was thinking about Robo. I was trying to make my own joke. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So that was RoboCop. That was the RoboCop segment for this week. Got it. Presented to you by Chronicle Collectibles. For the Ooh, latest hey, and greatest. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of, did you see what they posted today? What? They posted a tease uh, at Comic Con. They are going to be showing off their one fourth Alan Grant figure. Mm. Mm. And then I'll cut a promo on them. Mm. Here you go. <laughs> so you I really want this? So you got a one fourth scale Sam Neil figure, <laughs> Chico. Such a bad Scott Hall impression. It is um, very good, yeah. That's cool. You, you One fourth like should be like a seventeen or eighteen inch uh, statue or figure of mm-hmm. uh, Alan Grant. I want that. Yeah, yeah me too. Um, yeah, yeah. But wouldn't it be cooler if it was one fifth scale and then it would because they have a one fifth T Rex? Yeah, that'd be cool. How many people got that one fifth T Rex though? I've got three of them in my trunk. What? No. I have three seven foot T Rexes in no. my trunk. I think they're broken though. Uh-uh. I heard something rattling back there. Mm. Um, well, cool, Jake. Um, before we move on here, I know that you were down at SharkCon this weekend, and uh, you were posting a bunch of cool stuff on the YHS Instagram at YHS mm-hmm. Podcast. How mm-hmm. was Shark SharkCon? SharkCon. God, God. You know what? Like going to other conventions, like going to stuff like Dragon Con and Star Wars Celebration and all that stuff. So different because, you know, first of all, something like SharkCon, first of all, is um, it's more for like legitimate like conservation. And they're and they're and, and, and a lot of the speakers are 
are like uh, marine biologists and um, photographer, you know, underwater photographers and stuff like that. So it's it's very different in that sense. But then also, if you guys remember, you know, a few months back when we met Richard Dreyfus at Spooky Empire, mm-hmm. how long were we in that line? How long did the that The entire work? weekend? Four hours? Yeah. Sometimes it was, I... It was a four to five hour Yeah, day. Thursday AJ, through Monday. Sometimes yeah. I think I'm still in that line. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I wake right? up in cold sweats going... Exactly. Oh, it's like a reoccurring so, dream. Yeah. So much like Spooky, they had a VIP pass for this weekend, which... I wasn't I wasn't planning on getting it at first, but the the VIP uh, also uh, allowed you to come to. They were gonna they did a panel that was just Richard Dreyfus once the doors were closed, so only like only the VIP pass holders could get into it. So I was like, you know what? It's only fifty bucks. I'm gonna do it. Um, but I went in there to get some stuff signed, like right away, straight to like went over to the autographs. There is no line for anybody. Like I sent you guys a picture. And there's maybe three or four people in line, and that's what it was like all weekend long. Like you, like there are multiple times you could have just walked right up to Richard Dreyfus, Jake. which is crazy because like I've seen, we were at Spooky. I've seen, I saw him at Monster Mania, and line, like it's so weird how just the kind of convention changed Dictates, it that yeah. much. I feel like Richard I, Dreyfus doesn't have a. Um... It's like he has a growing fan base. Like he's got a finite an aging like, fan base. Yeah, so it's like once, like, um, he's done at least three to four appearances like this in that area of the country over the past couple of years. So maybe it's either one of two things: a, more than likely, like Jake said, it's a smaller con, but mm-hmm. b, a lot of people have met and got his autograph in the past couple of years in the Tampa area. Uh-huh. Maybe. Um, I think the most interesting thing is that, um. During all of the the Me Too stuff last year, Richard Dreyfus was kind of involved in that, and he kind of just his, his kept, approach was like, out. "No, I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. just gonna keep doing my own thing." It just floated away. Yeah, yeah he's funny. like, "No, I, I didn't do. I, I maybe well I did that. Who cares? Eh, who cares?" Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 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 That's her. Um, that's our collective Richard Dreyfus. Yes. Yeah, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. This sounds good, Jake, that the line wasn't so uh, long, but it also sounds like somehow I feel like I'd be mad about that because it's like because you've waited so long before. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, it's fine. Like it it almost seemed like it almost seemed like I wasn't. It's like the line. It's such a good situation with the line. It makes you feel like you're doing something wrong or like maybe you're like, are we supposed to be here yet? Like, is, what is happening? It's because weird because Abby and Craig aren't lying to people about, like, we're not, stuff. We're not, like, having, you know, freak outs trying to figure out if we're going to have time. Like, yeah. it was just well, so weird. And also, Jake, last time, uh, if if I remember correctly, at Spooky Empire, you let, like, I ended up getting your thing signed because you had yeah, to Yeah, because it was, because it was, like, it was coming up on the uh, the photo op, and I I had to <laughs> hold I on. To change into Quint. Wait, hold on. Wait. Okay, this is our life. This yeah. is the life we live. Yeah. But if you take a step outside of ourselves and the life we live, how weird is it that he, all right? Here's the situation: Craig and Jake and Abby are in line to meet Richard Dreyfus, but Jake had to leave the line early so he could put on his Quint costume. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it doesn't seem like a reality that anybody is, could does. ever live in. Yeah. That's, that's why I love it. That's why I love we it. We do. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, what did you, so you got your uh, your Jaws book signed, right? Uh, yeah, I have that, uh, the special edition copy of Memories from Martha's Vineyard, which already has about 15 signatures in it. And, you know, it's already got all those signatures in it. I might as well keep adding to it. So um, there were four were four Jaws people in attendance. Two of them were already in that book. Um, the other two were Richard Dreyfus and Carl Gottlieb. Uh, so I, I, I had them both add their signatures to the book. Who do you think, obviously, um, Roy Scheider and uh, Jacob Walsh are not going to be able to sign your... Uh, did I just say Jacob Walsh? Yeah. You did. Yeah. Yeah. Jacob right. Walsh can oh. definitely sign it. Roy Scheider and... Robert Shaw, who has a documentary, I heard. Oh. What's it called? <laughs> I think he does, yeah. Um, 
obviously you're not going to be able to obtain those signatures for your book. Right, but right, right. Who, uh, who would be the number one person that you could still get to sign it? That you haven't. Steven Spielberg? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. I think it'd probably be Steven Spielberg. Okay, um, but- also, also um, uh, you know, uh, what's her name? Lorraine, uh, is it Gary? I don't I don't even know if it's Gary. It is Gary. Yeah, it's Gary. Uh, yeah. Gary. It's a yeah. weird dyslexic she, thing. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't do, you know, you don't hear from her. Um, God, I hope she's not dead. I hope I'm not dead. <laughs> You don't, you don't hear from Lorraine. You know who I haven't heard from in a while? John F. Kennedy. What, what happened to that Lorraine? guy? Yeah, no, cool. it'd be she cool. is it'd fine. Be cool, I think. I think besides the other, you know, um, uh, you know, main main characters, I think she's next in line. You know, I I, I have a lot of the like <laughs> secondary characters. Uh, what are you laughing at? I'm sorry. Wikipedia has Lorraine Gary's. Uh, Last active year listed as 1987. Well, that's like for her acting. Acting, I know. But it's just yeah, funny. well, I mean, the last movie, she made, the last time the last she, movie she made was Jaws the Revenge. It's yeah. the last thing she did. She, hey, she that's acting. probably the last movie a couple people made. <laughs> 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 I can't get cast after Jaws the Revenge. I thought that was my big break. <laughs> I played um, Seaman number three. Oh. Right. oh. Okay. Uh, well, that's great, man. What um, uh, what else was going on down at Jaws Fest? Um, it wasn't Jaws Fest. It was Shark Con. Um, mm. there. Oh, I mean, I watched. I watched. I'm watched on a different a level tonight, dude. Yeah, yes. Some, Fact check. I, Thank you, Jake. I watched some panels, you know, and I and I watched people just talk about you know sharks and you know conservation and photographing sharks and stuff like that. It was all really fun stuff. Yeah. Um, there were two. There were two Jaws panels. There was the. The one that was just Richard Dreyfus, and then there was a panel that was Richard Dreyfus, Susan Blackline, uh, or Black. Uh, she, she, I've heard her name pronounced seven different ways at mm-hmm. that convention, so I have Susan. no idea how she says her Susan. name. Jeffrey Kramer, who played Deputy Hendrix, mm, cool. uh, and Carl Gottlieb, who wrote and was in Jaws. So okay, cool. um, that yeah. panel, I think, was a little more uh, entertaining than the one that was just Richard Dreyfus because um, – at this point, you know, we we all went to the the evening with Richard Dreyfus a few years ago, which was really fun. But after seeing that, and then seeing the panel, it was just him. And then the third panel, I realized he tells the same stories over and over. He's just tell, he's saying all the same things over and over. So it was good to have like Carl Gottlieb. And sometimes like Richard Dreyfus seems like he might be full of shit. Like you you'll hear him start talking about something, and you're like, that's not. That's not true. That's so it's like you, you have like three other people on the on the panel to kind of either back him up or be like or balance eh, him out. Maybe it was like that. They, there was the there was a lot of interesting talk though. They um they uh they talked shit about Universal a good bit and talked about how cheap they are. Um uh Carl Gottlieb called uh you know Zanuck and Brown are like two famous producers. They produced Jaw. They basically like made Jaws happen. Yep. Yeah. He called them greedy bastards. Oh, wow. Ooh. Like there was all kinds, you know, Richard Dreyfus talked about why he has never done like Jaws Fest or anything like that. And it was basically because, um, you know, Universal paid those actors for, you know, their, their salary was determined before the movie went four months over schedule. And there was never any like uh, they never were compensated for like the four months of extra work. There was never like a lot of a lot of with, with a lot of movies, if the movie does really good, the actors will get like a bonus or something like that. They didn't get anything. It was just like a really, you know, they talked about like the hiring of Susan Blackline was basically be, so they wouldn't have to hire uh, multiple people because she was a stunt woman and an actress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were like, well, I they mean, were like trying to save money everywhere they could, and that's why you know Richard Dreyfus was like, yeah, I had been, at, I was asked to do Jaws Fest, and I and I wrote them back and told them no because. Why would I do something that's going to make them more money when they kind of fucked over all the actors in Jaws? Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. And it's interesting because Jaws literally went on to become, at the time, the most like successful movie of all yeah. time. And it yeah. established summer blockbusters. And it launched Steven Spielberg's career to a completely different stratosphere. And like 
Yeah, that sucks. I'd, I'd be a little bit bitter too. <clears throat> there was but a I, lot of, I mean, there was a lot of good, interesting stuff, and it wasn't all like downer stuff like that. But I do, I did want to make a point to let you guys know that in the the Richard Dreyfus uh, like Q and A, within the first minute of him being on stage, he joked about having an orgasm. Oh, hey, so, man, that's you know. nothing to joke about. Yeah, like in <laughs> what con- serious in stuff. what context? <laughs> Um, he said that he was given an orgasm from the applause. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you were gonna say had it. A lot of people don't know this story, and I'll tell it. I was on the set of Jaws, and I was given an orgasm by Roy Scheider. Scheider. Uh, That's pretty, that was a pretty. Scheider. Dude, I want you to do Richard Dreyfus having an orgasm. Okay, here's the scene. <laughs> All right. So I walked in. I said hello, Mr. Scheider. I sat down. We were alone. <laughs> Robert Shaw was there drinking, <laughs> and I said, "What are we gonna do here for this scene?" Okay, and he looked at me and said, "Going on part two. <laughs> You're Hold delaying on, we're the orgasm. There. We're almost there." Uh-huh. Roy, shot. Bear with me. Roy looked at me and said, "I'm waiting." I'm going to give you the greatest <laughs> orgasm of your life. Okay. And I looked at him and I said, Roy, can you do that? <laughs> and he looked at me and said, I am the chief of police. <laughs> <laughs> I can do anything I want. Oh, and that is the Richard Dreyfuss oh, orgasm oh. story. <laughs> well, hey, you know what's fun? Hold on. That was amazing. But let me tell you. It was kind of close to that because I'm gonna read, <laughs> I am gonna I am gonna read you a word for word quote that Richard Shaw said. Wait, Richard Dreyfus said about Robert Shaw. Okay. okay. If I was bisexual, I would have let him do me in a second. Whoa, that's hot. He said that. He said Whoa. that. Whoa. There's hey, some fanfic going hey, on right now not, in my head. If I was if I was bisexual, if, 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 I do not want Bob for dinner, Faye. Uh, holy shit, dude, that's fucking crazy. Dude. Wait, why? Because he's a great actor? I think I'd let a great actor fuck me. Yeah, there's like a magnetism about them. Yeah, basically. It's hard yeah. to say no. Yeah, yeah. I've never been attracted to a man before, but god damn it, it's Hugh Jackman. <laughs> um, the mas- The vascularity. <laughs> Look at him. No. All right. Well, listen. That's awesome. That's amazing. I, I feel like that yeah, was everything. Why is he did. bringing that up? There's no way that somebody asked that. Like he's just bringing that no, up on his own. No, it was it was so like both nights. Uh, they before they like let into audience questions. They um they they made a point to be like, hey, don't ask about that stupid Robert Shaw feud bullshit yeah, because with the it's, it, like pissing. we've had enough of hearing about it. But even though they said that, it prompted Richard Dreyfus to delve into the twenty minutes about how that wasn't a real thing and how and like you know why he thinks yeah. it happened and and it also led him to, to just like tell multiple stories about robert shaw but uh one of the one of the night he ta- he said that he was talking about how much he, you know he admired robert shaw and, right. and and all of that stuff and that's when he that's when he uh, dropped that little nugget yeah that's a sweet juicy nugget uh, farewell hey he also do. like he was he was also cursing a lot which i i love yeah and yeah, was, yeah. what was like particularly funny is like this girl that was younger than 10 years old asked a question and he, I, I was like, is he purposefully saying this amount of fucks in this answer to a 10 year old girl? Did he girl? have like a flask Who's, with him? What is a, ten, he, what does a 10 year old girl ask Richard Dreyfus? Yeah, I want to know. She, you know what? Like, other than, uh, are you my real dad? She, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what she asked. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, fuck your mother. Um, yeah, no, fucked her good. No, it was it was some, it was some like why did you why did you take a part in this movie? You know, it was yeah. it was some 
Something Dumb. mom Things had her ass. Um, yeah. There's actually a story. I don't know if he told the story, but the story that I've heard is that Richard Dreyfuss originally said no to Jaws, and then he went and did some other movie, and he saw himself on screen. It was like, holy shit, I'm terrible. I need to take any job yeah. that I can. And went and, ta- and yeah. he took Jaws. So. He, told, he told the story twice over the weekend. Oh, yeah, so he he also, oh Jake's heard that Did one. you enjoy that, Jake? He also, <laughs> he, he also talked about how he like uh, shit-talked other actors to Steven Spielberg into like trying to talk Steven like trying he basically like tricked Steven Spielberg into giving him the role in um uh Close Encounters. Oh. Cuz okay. he was like he said he re- he said he read it and he really loved it and he wanted it and he was like he kept asking Steven Spielberg about it and he said like every he would have all these talks with Steven Spielberg and Steven Spielberg was like yeah I'm thinking about uh I'm I'm thinking about Jack Nicholson. And he would um, say stuff like Jack Nicholson has no sense of humor. Like he was just like shit. T- he and he I was like, and I didn't that. mean it. I like these people, but I. He's like, I said whatever I had to say to put yeah. it in Steven Spielberg's mind. Right. That right. they were wrong for the part. Do you yeah, he, respect that? He's like uh, Stephen. Who? <laughs> who are you considering? Well, well, um, considering Paul Newman, that guy couldn't act if he yeah, tried. Have you seen his face? It's <laughs> a salad dressing man. Yeah. Um, Abby, real yeah. quick. Roy Scheider. Yeah. Richard Dreyfus. Yeah. Robert Shaw. Are my getting fuck one, marry one, kill one? No. Okay. Good. Well, sure. <laughs> okay. No. Do I want that? Those I don't know. Three, what, what's my other option? At those at the at, at that time, nineteen seventy five, who who's the best looking of the three? <sighs> Probably Ooh. Robert Shaw. Wow. That's crazy. Robert Shaw actually is a really good looking if you look at the like they kind of roughed him up for Jaws, but like he's like a good yeah. looking dude. Yeah, he's a good he looking was, dude. Roy Scheider's a kind of like Roy Scheider's like a It's his confidence and like the mystique. It's like a fucking, uh, what a, you know, a, what's Hemingway esque. Like that's what I'm looking for. Like a quiet man, a few words, who's like going to get the job done. Oh, there you have yeah. it. You heard it here, folks. There you go. And for more on Robert Shaw, I believe there's a documentary that you can find <laughs> on YouTube. I don't I think know there's what a documentary, it's called. Yeah, you probably just search Robert Shaw. I think it's on YouTube. I think at this point, search "Yes, have some Robert Shaw documentary." Hey, we should make our own. shirts that say "Have you heard of that Robert Shaw documentary?" I love that idea. We should make our own Robert Shaw documentary. Put it on YouTube, but it's all factually collectors wrong. club item. It's all everything's wrong. It opens. All right, close up on Jake. Robert Shaw was born in Italy in 1983. 83? Um, yeah, yeah. Today he resides in wonderful California. <laughs> when he's not attending San Diego Padres baseball games, you can find him hanging out with the local orca whales at the San Diego SeaWorld. All right. You guys ready to move on to this fuck budget? Yes. Let's do the fuck Let's budget. Do All it. right, cool. Before we do that, don't forget that you can find Yes Have Some on Instagram and Twitter at YHS Podcast. Our official website, which is going through a redesign right now. I didn't mean to. I made some fuck ups, but it's being redesigned right now. I mean, yes, have some cast. Didn't mean it. Dot com. Um, we're going to be updating that a lot with a bunch of new stuff, all the new content. Obviously, we talked about patreon.com slash yes, have some. And the official Facebook discussion group for Yes Have Some podcast is Yes Have Some Group Therapy. And I've asked her for the last two weeks, and I'm going to ask her again. Abigail, yes. if somebody wanted to find Yes Have Some Group Therapy, what would they need to do? Well, they get on Facebook, and they go to Yes Have Some podcast page, and then they can scroll down a little bit, and they'll see Yes Have Some <laughs> podcast group therapy pop up, and they'll yeah. see it, and they click That's it. That's the easiest way. That's the easiest way. You just got to click it. You just got to click it. Okay. All right. Just click it. Did I do good? Let's move on to this fuck budget. Y'all ready? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Mother, mother, fuck. Mother, mother, fuck, fuck. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Welcome to the Yes Have Some Fuck Budget, the fun segment where we take five topics in movies, TV, toys, and other pop culture related things, and we break them down one by one, allocating fucks to each one of them. Abigail and Jake have a fuck bank of 10 fucks each. And they have to spend their ka-ching, fucks. Ka-ching, ka-ching. They have to spend their fucks wisely. Um, I was sad. Uh, there will be no Joaquin Phoenix talk this week. I was a little bummed out. I'm I had so much fun talking about him down. last week with you guys. So, <laughs> do you guys have your fucks allocated? Yes. Jake? I got my fucks in a row, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love Ooh, that. All Get his fucks, fucks in a row. row. All right. Number one. Will. 
Oh released today the brand new Bad Robot production, the trailer for Overlord. We heard about this movie a lot over the last year or two. It was once rumored to be a Cloverfield movie. As of right now, it doesn't seem to be. But, but like who we all, knows? Like we always say, anything could end up who being knows, a Cloverfield yeah. movie. Yeah, I was watching Jaws 3 the other day, and at the end I was like, wait, was that a Cloverfield movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Overlord trailer And now it's time out. for us to make the joke, are we in a Cloverfield movie? Because yes. Are we in a Cloverfield movie? Yes. Even all your home videos from your childhood all could be Cloverfield. Cloverfield. It's like, I didn't notice that monster falling from the sky last time. When it comes to the His Overlord trailer that was released today, Jacob Walsh, how many fucks do you give? Uh, I gave it one. Uh, I mean, it looks like it looks like it could be interesting. It looks cool. Um, I, I like I'm I like the idea of like stumbling upon ex- like weird experiments gone wrong. Uh, part of me wishes it was like more uh, monsters in there and less like people who look like zombies. But uh, yeah, it looks cool. Um, I, I I'm I'm maybe. In another episode, would have gave it more than one fuck, but it only got one fuck this week. Because mm, you were allocating properly. Yeah. Uh, before we go into more detail about the trailer, Abigail, how yeah. many fucks did you give this? Well, I didn't budget anything. I threw four fucks at this. Um, Whoa. Dude, I thought this trailer was Shit. badass. Uh, I watched it twice. Wow. First time I watched it, I literally out loud said, holy fuck. So I thought it looked really scary. Um, the opening is like very J.J. Abrams, like you're in an airplane. It almost reminded me of The Force Awakens. Um, mm-hmm. and lost and there's very chilling imagery very right like quickly you see like fucked up like religious objects and then people hanging from trees and fire and like the human lab and like all that stuff looks chilling and there were parts of it that reminded me of Annihilation visually and Get Out visually and like in theme so I think it's going to be good I hope it has monsters I think they're probably not showing us all the scary stuff yet so I agree yeah. I give you maybe it maybe I would have Maybe I would have given it more fucks if it didn't have that fucking god awful ACDC. AC Jake, I wrote the words "Do I like ACDC now?" down in my notes because I was like, "Wait a minute, I like this trailer," but no, I still don't like ACDC. Um, I don't. Okay, I hate ACDC. Kind of. Too, Out of all yeah. of their songs, that one, it's Hell's Bells. I think I can kind of tolerate it. I like the musical portion of that song. As soon as he starts singing, I kind of get mad. Um, but. I watched this trailer today, so I guess it's like a World War II movie. Um, yeah. And the, the the mission goes awry. They discover some laboratory. There's Nazis. There's zombies. I I've been kind of excited about this movie because I love I basically anything Bad Robot puts out that JJ Abrams is like working on or producing. It's it does, it's not always good. But it's at least always intriguing, right? So, like, the last Cloverfield movie, we, we reviewed it. Like, it's not the greatest movie of all time, but the 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 lore around the development of it and, and all that was fun. So, um, I thought the trailer was okay. I'm not, like, I'm not, I, I kind of, when I started it, I was like, oh, this is going to be thrilling. And I personally wasn't thrilled. Mm-hmm. Sounds like Jake maybe wasn't as thrilled. Seems like Abby was more into it. I liked it. it. Um... I do like the still image of the girl with the flamethrower. Yeah, that's honestly what sold me. Like, without girl with flamethrower, I don't know if I'd be, like, quite... I'd probably give two fucks, but fucking... I like it. I think it's cool. So, this guy at work said it reminded him of that video game Wolfenstein. Remember that game? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to play it, but I... Was I never really played it, but I, yeah. I know what it is. Yeah. Um. So, well, let's talk about this for a few more minutes. Um. We know there's zombies of some sort. Well... We can call them. Do we? I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I don't know Mutated what. Humans. It looks like yeah. there's multiple creatures, multiple, like, <clears throat> it, it looks less like zombies and just kind of more like each, maybe each experiment is a different outcome. I don't know. It's, it's oh, okay, very that's weird. that's interesting. I kind of got a, 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 the vibe I think they're maybe going for might be like the thing a little bit. Like, I'm not saying it's going to be like the thing, but. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um. You? A bunch of people out, like, turning on each other and, yes. like, who did it or who has it kind of a thing. Maybe. As they all die off. Uh, I think the logo sucks. Whatever that font is. Oh, that blows. It looks like a straight to DVD am- American movie. Chopper or, like, one of those. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't like look that. good. Um, but overall, I mean, I, do you, okay, here's the real question. Is there a chance that this is part of the Cloverfield universe? Yes. Uh, I think. I mean, I, I guess there's always a chance, but it doesn't really look like. 
it doesn't to me it doesn't look like I, I wouldn't see this and be like oh this could be Cloverfield I don't know like I don't think so well it takes place it's taking place in the past yes so wouldn't I feel like there could they could just throw in some like oh this lab also was the origin for one of these monsters that you see later on god they probably will that's what I think they would do um, I don't know that they would I just want them to <laughs> Like we always say, anything could be a Cloverfield movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you guys have any more on this before we move on? I guess, you know, the trailer doesn't give... What's interesting to me is I feel like we're... I thought the zombie thing was kind of like dying out, but it's not. Uh, Last week they announced zombie... They don't die. (laughs) They actually live for... I'm sorry. (laughs) They keep coming back. Um, Jake, nothing. (laughs) Jake, that was a joke. You laughed. Jake, that was my joke. (laughs) <laughs> you laugh. Zombie Land Two give, is, give that is also happening officially with the original cast coming back with the same director, Ruben Fleischer. Um, but it was cool. also announced last week that uh, that director, Jim Jarmusch, who did uh, Broken Flowers, is doing a zombie movie with fucking Adam Driver and Bill, Bill Murray. Okay. Bill Murray, yeah. So like that's intriguing to me. <clears throat> Bill Murray yeah. plays a cop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll see it. That could be cool. That'd be yeah. cool. All right, you guys ready? To I'll watch it. Now I'll give it a fuck. Yeah. No, you can't. It's I not can't part of the budget. It's not, it's not in the budget yet. Anything else on this trailer before we move on? That's it. Nope. Let's do it. All, all right. right. It's San Diego Comic Con this week. There's all sorts of new products and things being unveiled. Toys, posters, pins, records. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I say this every year. I really want to go to San Diego Comic Con. There's just so God, much stuff. Too. Maybe next year. Me too. Next year. Yeah. Me too. It's not um, even. It's not even started yet, and there's already like a lot of reveals happening, which is so weird. Yeah, it sucks. And like, there's real like Mondo has just got so many prints coming out, yeah. and like all these. Every toy company does an exclusive. Um, I'm sure it's very chaotic there and very stressful, but that's what we live for around here. We live for the stress. Yeah. So we'll go one year. And we'll complain the entire time. I can't wait. Oh, my God. Oh, it's all we're going to do. Oh, yeah. All right. Mondo, Ghostbusters. They're putting out a Ghostbusters print. Every website reported that this was the first ever Mondo Ghostbusters print, but they were wrong. This is the second Mondo Ghostbusters print. The first available. Well, I'm just saying. I don't care if there's like, uh, I don't know. What, What do you call it when there's like a piece of the information that is easily skippable? And they leave it out. I think I'm having a stroke. I know. I was, I'm was. i having a stroke. It was the result of this What I'm saying is that there was about. an answer the call Mondo print that was made <laughs> last year that was given <laughs> out as a prize on Ghostbusters Day, but it was never made available to the public. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. But that is neither here nor there. There is a brand new Mondo Ghostbusters print being released exclusively at San Diego Comic-Con and online this Saturday. There's a glow-in-the-dark variant. It's done by a uh, very popular Mondo artist, Tom Whalen. Uh, it features all four Ghostbusters in kind of a profile pose. You got Stay Puft, you got Gozer, have a terror dog, and you have the Ecto-1 Abigail Gardner. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the brand new second ever Mondo Go... Why am I like, why am I so stuck on that? <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, like no, hey, websites. Because you, you're because wrong. You're mad that you never, you're mad that you never got... Yeah, that, that literally is why. It. I'm mad too. I like that answer the call print better than this one. Wow. I don't even care. I'm gonna Ooh, say it. Hot. Are we are we giving fucks? All right, Goger, call me. Do you down. wanna keep talking about thoughts. that phrase you were give looking for? Thoughts. Do I get to give my fucks? I'll figure out my phrase, you give me the fucks. <laughs> I give this two fucks. Okay. Uh I actually I like the variant more. Um I kind of think that I feel like there's no way I'm gonna get it because it's so hard to obtain these. So I, I would give more fucks, but because I'm trying to like I don't know, like cushion my fall so I don't. It doesn't hurt as bad when I don't. I'm gonna give it two fucks. I think they're very cute, and I think it's very cool that Mondo has the rights and that there will probably be more Ghostbusters stuff coming out. So that's great. But is it my favorite print of all time? The color scheme's nice. It's like very well done. Uh, but I don't know if it's quite my style. So I give it two fucks, and that's where I stand. All right. Yeah. Jay Walsh, how many fucks? Yo, uh, I gave it one. Um, it's, yeah, it's cool that they're, they're like finally putting out a Ghostbusters print. And I really like, uh, Waylon. I, I own a few of his prints. Mm -hmm. I own an original piece of artwork by this guy. Oh, fuck. Um, I like his stuff. I don't love this poster. I don't think it's kind of underwhelming to me. Uh, 
I I just don't. I'm not into it. I'm not gonna buy it. I don't care. Like it, it, it's it's fine. I ha- I like half of the poster better than the other half. Uh, I just it's just a little underwhelming for like Mondo's like. All right, we're doing our first Ghostbuster print. I'm like, all right, we'll fucking do something really cool with it. If you're gonna do that, I just I feel like Bill Murray and uh, uh, fucking Spangler, uh, Harold Ray. I think their expressions are. I feel like there's not a, a lot of emotion or f- like feeling or motion in the picture. Which that's his it. thing. Like that's his like when he does it's people, dead. they're always like kind of by that. Uh, they're always like profile. Like that's kind of his thing. Yeah. Um, which is, I don't that's know, it's fine, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm just not into. It. I'm just not yeah. into this particular. Yeah. Like, like I said, I like this guy, and I and I've spent some money on on him. I just don't love this one. Yeah. Um, couple uh, pieces of note here. It will be available online Saturday. Uh, by the time you listen to this, uh, this will be out before Saturday, so it will be available. By online. the time you listen to this, it will be sold out. Well, more than likely, <laughs> it, it should go fast. I mean, they they always do. Um, yeah. Tom Whalen also did a print for the Ghostbusters Traveling Art Show a couple years back for the God was that our, was that the thirtieth anniversary five years ago already? Yeah, um, I think so. He I've always wanted this print. It's called Confectionary Kaiju. It's oh, like a, a Japanese style Stay Puft print, and it's uh it's like long. It's like twelve inches wide and thirty six inches long. Yeah. Um, and that's a very cool. I like print. that one better. I like that one better than this. Yeah, one. and I like that one better than this one too. But I'm like now I'm like wait. Do I need both of them? Do I need to put the set together? Will people respect yeah. me more? Um, so I, I think overall it's very cool that Mondo is putting out a Ghostbusters print. I think that's a good sign for things to come. They're also putting out some enamel pins, uh, which are cool. Yeah. Um, I do I, like the pins. Pins like are pins. very cute. And um, I do want to say this. There's some other Mondo prints coming out for San Diego Comic Con that I like a whole lot. Did you guys yeah. see... The Annihilation print. Yes, I had. I did, yeah. That was fucking, it's gorgeous. Rory Kurtz, uh, who is a, another famous Mondo artist, he's done uh, Baby Driver and Drive and some, uh, he did like uh, that Ex Machina poster that everybody loses their shit over. Dude. Um, he is doing a, a an Annihilation print and I don't know, Jake, we talked about it a little bit today. I, I, I didn't really express my opinion when we were all talking about it, but um the, the print is based on the scene in Annihilation where you kind of see the human forms of the uh, the flowers and the, the bushes yeah. and all that shit. That's one of my favorite images in the movie. Uh, and I, I think it's a really well done print. I would really like to get that. I think it's very pretty. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I completely agree. It's gorgeous. It looks like a, like a theatrical or like a, a, like a production, like a playbill or something like it's beautiful yeah i love it i haven't seen annihilation since theaters but i need to watch it again because i did enjoy it a lot yeah i want to see it again yeah it's it's great i like it um the the lettering the way the lettering is placed is i think that's kind of a callback to the book that's how if you've ever seen the cover of the book that's how the letters are um i i like it it on the cover of the book because i would know it if it was on the cover of the book it's on the cover. Yeah, it's on the cover. Yes. You don't have to look inside. Don't worry. No words. Um, you guys know every I, time I get a book, I'm like, where are the glossy photos in the middle? I need them. <laughs> yeah, because that's what we did as kids. You just like, you don't even read. You just feel for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like this print, and I would buy it. I think it's I think it's very beautiful. But also, um, one of the things that I, I, I was talking about whenever, like, when I first saw Annihilation, and I was talking with somebody about, like, they should make some prints, Mm-hmm. Um, the the thought that came up was like they should definitely make a print that has like maybe the bear or the the body in the pool would be cool, but I bet every print is just going to be centered around these fucking flowers, <laughs> and that's exactly what ha- that's exactly what happened. Jake's mad. I would I would love I would love a print of that scary fucking bear, but I still love this. I still would buy this. Cool, okay. very cool. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, check out Mondo's website mondotees.com. Uh, for more information on all the prints that you're not going to be able to afford or get because they will sell out. Um, moving on, fuck budget. Yeah. It was announced today. Huh. Greg Nicotero, who is a famous Hollywood makeup artist, very famous for working on The Walking Dead, amongst a bunch of other shit, is bringing back Creep Show yeah. as an anthology yeah. series for the Shutter Network, which is a horror streaming service. I know we got some Creep Show fans here. Abigail Gardner. When it comes to the creep show making its return, much like RoboCop, 
Yeah. How many fucks do you give? I gave this one fuck. Oh. I'm sort of questioning if I should bump it up to two, but I honestly, because I don't have a trailer, there isn't a trailer in hand to see, there isn't footage, and because it's all based on like new material from what I read, and because there's a Walking Dead name attached to it, I get stressed <laughs> out, okay. so I'm going to be reserving all more fucks and just give this one fuck. But I do like the original Creep Show. I do like Stephen King. I haven't seen the second one. Um, I watched it for the first time last, like, Halloween time, and I really enjoyed it. So, you know, I'm just kind of trepidatious and tentative and hoping that this is good, but a little suspect. So okay. there's only one fuck. Jake? Yeah, I gave it a, I gave it two fucks. Um, I think it's a great idea. I think Creepshow is a, a really good thing to bring back. Uh, I think Greg, Greg Nicotero has been, um, you know, responsible or, or been involved with you know, almost all of the best horror stuff in the last 30 whatever years. Like he, he has done so many of like your favorite, you know, effects. Like he, he, he's been around a lot. He's like, he was, he was like personal friends with George Romero. He, you know, he's done a lot of shit him and like uh, a few other guys are like, you know, he's, he's one of the like pioneers of that kind of stuff. And I think he's perfect to be bringing this back. Um, on top of that, like anthologies, I think are always fun. I always feel like there should be more of those. I know this is a show and not a movie, but I all like every time I watch creep show or like uh, twilight zone, I'm always like, why don't they make like anthology movies like this? Anymore. These are there's so much fun. Yeah. Well, it's cool to be um, able to go to a movie and see four different stories. And stories it's pieced together. It's yeah. kind of a loss. They I feel like they used to do it a lot more. It doesn't like it happens sometimes, but they're they're never. It's just not as much. Also, it, it reminds me of I don't know if you guys ever watched um, Masters of Horror when it was on TV. It was on I think Showtime, and it was like 45 minute episodes, all horror. And every episode, it was, it sounds a lot like Creep Show. Every episode was a different director, but all like, you know, famous directors, a lot of people who are like, like doing horror stuff. And, and, you know, some of the episodes weren't the best, but it also like brought a lot of great stuff. Like there's a lot of really weird, it like, it, it ran like anywhere from like being legitimately scary to like gross out to like silly funny like Joe Dante style stuff and the is that the series that had that imprint movie? Yeah, that was one, that was one of the Masters of Horror episodes. Oh, okay. um, but it reminds me of that, and I think that that's cool because there's such a a wide range of what we could be getting from it. It just seems fun, so I I would have given this more than two fucks, but there's something more important to me on this list. Do you um, do you have a subscription to the Shutter Network? I don't, but I will. You know, like I right. I don't. Um, it, it is something I'd thought about before because there had been other things on Shutter that I have been like, oh, I want to watch this. Oh, it's on Shutter. Um, so it's not something that I I have a subscription to, but I I wouldn't I yeah. wouldn't. I don't think it's I think yeah, it's like seven or eight bucks a month, something pretty cheap. Um, probably. Well, cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's cool. Like. Um, Trick or Treat is the one example of a, a modern horror anthology that, like, people love Trick or Treat. Yes. Like, it's fun. Yeah, it's And good, it's spooky yeah. and yeah. scary and silly. And there's, silly. like, a little thread that weaves through But all one of the them. reasons that people like it is because it's an anthology. And yep. I think they should do more of them. Do it. That's my idea. Although I've never mm -hmm. watched, uh... Well, I guess American Horror Story is an anthology in the sense that it's a different thing every, every year season. but not every episode so uh, that's a loose use of the term i think yeah not, not everything can be an anthology okay just because you know if you have a <laughs> if you get a new job every year you're not an anthology okay it's a, yeah, just I'm bad an, I'm, I'm an anthologist your job. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to anthology. i keep changing my cell phone let's move number. on to this next one because it's can gonna we? be fun all right okay aquaman uh, there's an Aquaman poster. <laughs> I can't mm -hmm. even set mm -hmm. this one up. So when yeah. it comes to the brand new Aquaman poster from the DC Extended Universe, they should keep extending that universe so far that it just falls right off a cliff. Just keep, like, just keep going. <laughs> I, I just think, keep walking. I, I, 
Craig, I'm starting to feel like they are purposefully doing that. Yes, <laughs> like, they're burying it like they did to freaks Jesus and geeks Christ. to kill it. I don't know though because like who's going? Who's going first? Who's Jake, doing their fucks first? Although I'm, I have a feeling Me? we may be giving the same amount. Yeah, Jake. Go. Yeah, Jake, you haven't, you haven't gone first yet. Go, Jake. When it when it comes to the brand new Aquaman poster starring Jason Momoa and a whole bunch of sharks. And oh the wait, entire is from, ocean. Is this from SharkCon? Jake, how many hey, fucks? Abby. Pam. Abby. Yes. Abby. Yeah. On the count of three, we're gonna say how many fucks we give okay. this. Okay. Okay. Me too. One. Two. Two. two Three. Three. Zero! Zero. Oh, I mean, zero. I, well, oh. You guys don't like it? Yeah. Jake, um, zero fucks. Yes. I'm so, I've been excited about this all day. Okay. Zero. Let's start talking. So, it is. It is. Yeah, let's is do it. it. This might um, be its own episode. This poster is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't understand. Like To me, it feels like at this point, whoever is making decisions at DC may have been hired by Marvel to purposefully Ooh, like go oh, in there and just job. fuck shit up that. because this is the stupidest like wait a minute what is happening is it Vladimir what is Putin? happening is Whoa. Russia interfering with our posters Whoa. I think so it's so weird because like half of the sea creatures are like real pictures of sea creatures and then half are like computer generated images of sea creatures and then there's like a few that are just cut and pasted on there more than one time is are they underwater? It doesn't look like it. Is Jason Momoa like underwater in this picture? I don't think so. A fucking this aquarium is the wall. Ugliest fucking. This is the weirdest poster I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Cool. Okay. Abigail. Yeah. It seems like Jake likes it. I think Jake liked it. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find the thread that we have in group therapy because there were some really great comments. Um, my comment regarding this poster was I knew that they filmed this in. Or I said I knew they did did a lot of filming in Atlanta. I didn't know they filmed this at the Georgia Aquarium because it looks like the entire movie <laughs> was filmed in the fucking giant glass wall at the Georgia Aquarium. <laughs> um, it is there's it and also uh, somebody commented, "Is he wearing jeans?" Jason Momoa. I didn't say that, but I thought that was funny as fuck because it does look like he's wearing fucking jeans. And hey, there's always that one poor kid at the water park wearing jeans. Dude, like he didn't know he was gonna go to Whitewater that day, but his yeah. friends went, so he yeah. got to go with them like, oh, and cool. wear jeans. Hey, you know what's you know what's really fun and comfortable when you're swimming? Jeans. Wet denim. Ooh, and like leather gauntlets. Does he have shoes on? <laughs> Do you need, these are like aqua socks? Oh, um, God. I, uh, I, this is a bad poster. Like, a, it's different. First of all, like, all the fucking, what are those? Uh, killer whales? They're in, like, a very perfect formation. Yeah. I thought this was the new Mighty Ducks movie. Uh, what's weird about it, it was like, okay, we, it's no secret and it's no, it's not breaking news that modern day studio uh, movie posters are bad, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a different kind of bad. Like, Modern studio movie posters <laughs> it's so all bad. they all kind of look the same. Yeah. They all kind of look like, oh, they took all the characters, they did kind of a not great Photoshop, but it's whatever. They yeah. all kind of look like that. This looks like somebody this is how I think it went down. Guys, we need an Aquaman poster. Oh man, our Photoshop In ten minutes. Our Photoshop <laughs> account, uh, we didn't pay for it. Alright, well, do we still have Microsoft Paint? We do. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then they went to Google. They typed in sharks in aquarium. They copied the first photo available. Yes. Pasted it into paint. And yes. then pasted a picture of Jason. It's like ide- I'm looking at the Georgia Aquarium, like the big wall. I looked up an image of it. It's identical. Like you go back and forth. It's okay. Same color scheme. Same everything. Like there is quite why. There, I, will, I, I recognize want to say that being right underwater looks the something. same. There but, is probably a hundred artists who for like for like a thousand for free no they could do it just because they care and put passion into it artists like would would literally i wish in like three days give a great like a poster that you would look at and go craig you could draw a better poster hold on this movie craig would just draw a ninja turtle people are people are already worried that this movie's not going to be good this poster it's this poster's like, like, go home. It says home is calling, but it should say just go ahead and turn around and go home and don't buy your ticket to this. This Nobody wants to This looks it. like if I made this the background of my computer, my computer would get a virus. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very bad. And people <laughs> Why? would just to look at it. 
I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Why? Okay, so I'm looking at this poster. All right, right let's examine. It looks like the one shark is all laughing these, at everyone because so, his mouth is open. Okay, so all the all the sea creatures, right? The ones in the middle of the poster are looking straight on. Everything on the right is looking to the right. Everything on the left is looking to the left. You know, it's one big formation. Why is one great white shark breaking formation to stare directly into the camera? <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, and guys, this movie's a fucking like, shark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking get What is photo. happening? Oh, oh my fucking god! He's like, "Hey guys, watch me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make eye contact." This is the Dude, worst. This thing is Jason seen. Momoa looks like. Like here's here's the caption. It should say, "That moment when a bunch of sharks show up when you're trying to take a shit." God, he's <laughs> I wanna, squatting. I wish that I wish the tagline was, "I'm contractually." Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, you know, like obliged to be in this movie. Yes, I'm contractually obligated to be in this movie. Also, I'm pooping. Oh, uh. oh man. Um, God, yeah. is there a city behind him? Is that like his city? Yeah, it's his Aquaman Aqua city? city. Yeah, that's his. That's where he's from. <laughs> I guess, yeah. It's home. Okay. Oh no, that's uh, that's Atlanta. That's Atlanta. Yeah. You can see little penguins. It's, you thought it was Atlantis. World of Coke. Atlanta. If you squint, you'll see the World of Coke sign. <laughs> um, mm. it's it's like. All joking aside, like some people were defending the trailer, and it's like I get it. You want the DC movies to be good. You're defending or the the poster. I should say this is bad. I don't think that I think this poster has to be worse than whatever the movie ends up being. It has to be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for but, sure, has to be. But, yeah, because there's like other actors in that movie that uh, who knows there could be like a good scene. And it's just weird. It's just a weird fucking poster. It's a weird move. Stiff and stilted and weird. It looks like an accident. It's inorganic. Yeah. So it's very weird. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you like it or? I'm thinking about upping my fucks. Uh, <laughs> I um, I've got nothing to say. Yeah. And I think we just. Yeah. I think we were it's just, just very mean about this poster. So I think I feel good. Yeah. About that. It looks like the poster that you'd get if you like. Uh, never mind. I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say, but mm-hmm. trust me, it was. That's fucked. for after. Hours. That's for the bonus episode. Bonus episode. All right, cool. Let's move on. Next up, I don't know how we can top that. It was announced today that the brand new trailer for Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is going to be debuting at San Diego Comic-Con this Saturday. There was a little clip released with a little tease with Millie Bobby Brown. Obviously, she plays Eleven in Stranger Things. She's going to be in the new Godzilla movie with the likes of, oh gosh, who's in it? Kyle Chandler. A bunch of, yeah. Vera Farminga. Is that, I think that's her name. Um, Flam- I think it's pronounced uh, Flamingo. Okay. Okay. Vera Flamingo and Kyle Chandler <laughs> starring in Godzilla, King of the Monsters. There's a new trailer coming. Jake, when it comes to this new trailer, how many fucks do you give? Um, I gave it all the fucks I had left, which was six. Dang. Uh, Guys, that's a record. It, We've never had six more. fucks given. Record breaking. Unbelievable. Jake, you just gave six fucks. What are you going to do next? That's like a proper allocation of fucks. That's not like fake fucks. That's not like a check. It's like you actually had them saved for it. So that's that's big. Um, so here's a couple couple things to think about. It's been five... It, well, when the movie comes out, it'll have been five years since the first Godzilla. Uh-huh. That's a long time for like a franchise. Yeah. Um, even the... The movie the, takes place five... Like it... it it picks up in real time as well. It takes place five years later. I think Ghostbusters 2 was the last time that it was five years later. So yeah, hopefully sure. this movie starts off with Sigourney Weaver pushing a baby Godzilla down a sidewalk. And then, well, we all know what happens from there. Uh, Jake, what, um, you're, you're the Godzilla expert. Um, what, what is your uh, excitement level for this? Um, I mean... I, I mean, obviously, like, I really love Godzilla. It's one, it's one of my favorite franchises of all time. Um, probably, like, the most. And I, I really like the first movie. So I've been excited about it. Um, I, you know, when the, when the first film came out, they teased it so much. And they, they showed a trailer at Comic-Con, uh, you know, almost an entire, I think it was like eight months before it was ever released online which is fucking awful to just be like to know that some people have seen this trailer and we're like why aren't we getting it it was like it was like torture waiting for them to post you know stuff when that first film came out mm-hmm. and this is the complete opposite they're like hey 
here's a here's a teaser like the, the the thing they posted today is not you know it's not anything exciting it's just a small clip but they have been like hey saturday two and a half minute trailer full trailer it will be really like i'm sure you know the first two trailers for the first movie didn't have godzilla in it and like you know the I know first trailer that made- for the first godzilla movie with the the skydivers was one of my favorite trailers of all time I it was great it. it was such so a great good. trailer yeah Um, but you know, like we've seen, so like, we know that there are three other monsters in this movie and they've been today all day, uh, legendary has been posting like, uh, teaser images for all the monsters. And, um, it's just been like really cool to see all that shit and know that we're probably going to see what they all look like by this weekend. You know, we had to wait basically until Godzilla came out to see anything the first time and that makes sense because that was the first time everybody was seeing it but now we've seen Godzilla you know they they posted a, a teaser image of him you know uh, you know firing his atomic breath uh, you know this past week um so like we're, they're already showing us the goods which is right. which is great it's exciting and like on top of the fact that we're getting all this Godzilla movie news there was also like the second part to the animated Godzilla film was added to Netflix today. NECA posted a, a, a teaser picture of them setting up for Comic Con that included two new like Godzilla figures. There's been a lot of Godzilla news today, so um, it's a good day. It's just super exciting. Yeah, it's a yeah. good day. I um before we go to Abby, I was um I was thinking about the Godzilla franchise and how much the the first one like what i love about that first trailer and the first couple trailers for the last movie is um because i i ended up really liking the movie it just set the tone so well for what that like because that movie's a little bit darker Mm -hmm. i think time is going to treat that movie very well i think in 20 years we're going to be looking at the godzilla movie the first one from a couple years ago and we're going to be thinking Uh like oh this was a really great monster movie that was probably so much better than it had any business being. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about the new one. I know it was delayed like a year. I know that they're building up for Kong versus Godzilla, uh, which is a lot of fun. Obviously, Skull Island was was great. And I know there's a Brie Larson fan in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> well, can, you, fan. can you do that again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Dude, Captain Marvel. Oh, she was with a bunch of sharks. Dude, and yeah, right. I hang out. How many um, fucks do you give? I give this all, all the fucks that I have left, which is three fucks. I thought that, uh, I saw that image, Jake. You were the one who posted it. I think you said that nothing else mattered once you'd seen that image. Yeah. And I was like, yes, it's amazing. Um, It makes me happy that it's coming out for your sake, but also because that little teaser bit was really good. And Millie Bobby Brown is like, you forget, because like Stranger Things, you get kind of whatever. It's a little oversaturated. She's, my second she's a fucking favorite, good little actress. She's my second favorite. Big actress. Um, Bobby Brown. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, think she, I think she was really good in that scene. I thought there was like a lot of tension. And just seeing a young girl at a control panel, like I, I was already like, okay, I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. Into it. And yeah, I liked the original. The first one, I remember being like taken aback by that. I remember going to see it because Walter White, what's his name, from Heisenberg... Yeah, Walter White from Heisenberg. <laughs> I can't remember that's the actor's yeah, name. I remember called. like finishing Breaking Bad and being like, I'm, I'm excited to see him in this movie. And then he like wasn't in a lot of it, but I liked it. He makes it like halfway through. Halfway through. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. There Brian it is. Cranston. There you go. Yeah, so I'm excited. I liked Skull Island too. I'm excited to see that like whatever team up or fight, whatever is going to happen. But yeah, this was, this is, it's cool that I, I want to go watch, rewatch that movie. And I'd like to see other older Godzilla films and kind of immerse myself a little bit, you know, in preparation for this because it's very cool looking. Yeah, I mean, you should you I, you know there the the other monster. There's three other monsters in this film that are all, um, you know, that have that have all been in multiple Godzilla films. Like you know the fr- the first one that came out a few years ago, the the Mutos. Those those were completely made up. Those were a new thing for for that movie. Um, we're getting King Ghidorah, Rodan, and Mothra in this film, and those are like people who don't know a whole lot about Godzilla still like recognize those names. Usually like those, those are like the three most common monsters other than Godzilla that pop up. Jake, what was the, um, what was the like common reaction to the fact that the last movie had a bunch of made up monster villains Were people like bummed about that when it came out? A lot of people, a lot of people were, um, and, and it was another thing where a lot of people thought, uh, I know like in the, 
in, in you know like in the Godzilla community, the people that I'm friends with that are huge on Godzilla thought maybe it was a misdirection and we were going to be getting something else. And I remember in some of the teaser trailers, they were taking like small images of this and that. And they were like, Oh, this looks like it could be this monster or this looks like it could be this. And then for a while there were like false rumors of other monsters being in the movie, you know, like, so we tend to convince think, ourselves of a lot, don't we? Yeah. yeah this is giving no, me flashbacks yeah, to sure. answer and the think, call. <laughs> remember when and Paul Feig was on, were, I was like, dude, remember, it's like Barnum and Bailey. Remember when Paul Feig was on the show? And I was like, Paul, all right, is the movie connected to the original? And he was like, no. And I was like, okay, but. 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 So you're what saying there's a like, So that was a case of a fan talking to the fucking director and still not buying it. So, yeah, we tend to, like, convince ourselves of all sorts of shit. A little bit. Yeah. Um, I think some people were bummed, but I think it makes sense because it's the first – it's the first movie. It's Godzilla. Godzilla needs to be the main. I, I know there were probably a little bit more. There, there was a lot of screen time for the other monsters, but they needed to be, they needed to be monsters that maybe people didn't know because you, you need to not care as much about those than you do for it's Godzilla. It's the first movie. You know what I mean? Like you don't traditionally in 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 the other Godzilla series, the first film's always just him. You know, right. it's just him right. fucking it up so um i think yeah. it makes sense to have a, a an unknown creature in the first film i was and just then bummed second i was bummed that the last one didn't have um one of my favorite characters from godzilla which was hank azaria <laughs> yeah i mean they couldn't the budget just wasn't there <laughs> they couldn't get, uh, hank. Couldn't get him <laughs> um, well, cool. Well, thank he was, you guys. Hey, he wasn't on a Simpson strike that that month. That so. month. Oh. God, am I about to get into the Simpsons so hard right God, now? It's such. It's so um, much work. Well, cool. Well, that was the fuck budget. Thank you guys so much for participating. Thank As you always, for having me. If you have an idea for the fuck budget, or if you want to. I don't know, comment on the things that we're talking about. Make sure you go to Yes Have Some Facebook group therapy. That's the official discussion group. And you can go talk about this week's fuck budget, next week's fuck budget. We should have a listener submitted fuck budget category. Like We once. should do that every wow. week yeah. from now on. Will you organize that? You know yeah, how to get to I group got, I'm therapy. On it. I'm on it. I know how to get to group therapy <laughs> on Facebook. Um, real quick before we, we say our sign-offs here, uh, during the recording of this podcast, it was just announced that Spirit Halloween has three brand new Ghostbusters products that are already up mm-hmm. for pre-order. Did you see these, Jake? Mm-hmm. I did. Okay. Uh, so, Spirit Halloween, they're going to start selling out quickly. That's how this stuff works. There's Ecto Goggles, PKE Meter, and a Ghost Trap. Uh, $50, $35, $29, $99, respectively. Respectively. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think the, the trap, stuff, trap looks kind of cool. The trap looks cool, man. Yeah. The the PK meter looks okay, but the trap looks. I mean, looks they're cool. they're they're uh, they're they're not they're costume stuff. You know, there's yeah. also a belt. There's also the, oh, the utility belt cool. um, for ten dollars. Oh, I see. Um, Actually, the utility belt looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty wait, close hold to what on, you're hold on. Together. There's also a two foot hanging Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Uh-huh. There's also a light up Slimer table turner. What the fuck is a table turner? Dude. There are also Slimer Pathway lights. What? what the fuck is fuck this? me, dude. A I'm Ghostbusters getting that my house. Jacket. There's a Ghostbusters jacket. Jake, I saw this a jacket. Slime... Holy shit! There's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff. Dude, is that jacket cool? I want what that. material do you think that is? I want is? that too. No. Hey, guess there. what? That jacket is not cool. You know why? Because it says, on call 24-7, servicing all your supernatural I can't, elimination, elimination needs. needs. Cool. Yep. Love that. That's what every good... <laughs> hey, screen accurate. That's what all their patches Wait. said. It also, what does it say? Velcro details allow you to change your name to whichever character you want to be. Does it come with four except, name tags? Except Zedmore. What? Is that for real? I made that last part up. Yeah. Oh, I made that last part me. up. Guys, I'm so happy that Winston's on the Mondo print. Yeah. I was just, yeah, yeah. I was waiting for it. It was like, join <laughs> Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and that's it. And Rick Moranis. <laughs> and and Rick Moranis. It goes busted. <laughs> <laughs> and William Atherton. 
and Peter McNichol. Kurt Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Poor Ernie Hudson. Guys, guys, quickly kind of related. I was watching an episode of House. You guys ever watch House? Great show. Started it from the beginning. A few episodes in. Watching it, Kurt Fuller's name pops up, and I was super excited about it. <laughs> was he like a patient? I know this. His his mother in the episode was a patient, and he was basically playing Jack Hardemeyer. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to pull the plug. Uh-huh. <laughs> My God, why didn't we talk about that role? I love it. It was great. It was great. That's great. Um, it's fun watching those kinds of shows. All sorts of people pop up. Um, All sorts yeah. of neat stuff like that. I don't that. trust that house. He's got issues. You know that. I heard. You heard yeah, that. He's smart. Though. Um, well, cool, everybody. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning into Yes, Have Some Podcast. We covered a lot of ground. Whoa, it's thunder. There's thunder. That thunder? That was Dun-dun. thunder. We're going to close with ACDC. Oh, wait, do we, do, do we even use closing music anymore? Hell's Bells. Hell's hey, what if the new Godzilla trailer opens up with like, I'm on a highway. Ugh. Ugh. Would you be mad? I'd kill myself. Do it. Do it. All right. Do it. Well, listen. <laughs> Don't do it. This was another fun episode of Yes, Have Some Podcast. And thank you to our special guest, Richard Dreyfuss, for telling us that wonderful story. Mm -hmm. I want to have it back. It's good having him on. It's good (laughs) having him on. Um, We got some fun guests coming up in the next couple weeks. Not going to announce anything just yet. Are we keeping this a secret? Well, I didn't didn't tell you guys this. I meant to tell you earlier. The guest that was scheduled for next week is 100% coming on the show, but it's been pushed back now again a couple of weeks. Oh, for real? Yeah. So we have more time to read the book. So you have all time... You all have more time to read Ghostbusters' daughter. Oops. Oops. Uh, My book. Oh, okay. That's oh. right. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll be making. Wait. Those. Do you mean? <laughs> yes. 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 I didn't want to announce it. Ernie Hudson's daughter is coming yeah. on the show, uh-huh. and she's going to just basically <laughs> fucking put it, the Ghostbusters marketing and merchandising in uh, its place on, on blast. <laughs> um, no, we'll we'll have those announcements coming up. We got some fun stuff planned, and obviously. We've got the bonus episodes starting next week for anybody on Patreon. Yes, have some dot com. Uh, that's not that's not what I was gonna say. Patreon dot com slash yes have some. Um, if you're on the ten dollar or more tier, you will be getting those bonus episodes starting next week, and uh, you're not gonna want to miss these. These are gonna be fun, and uh, that's really all we got this week. So for Jacob Walsh and Abigail Gardner, my name is Craig Goldberg. Thank you so much for tuning in to Yes Have Some podcast. Anything else before we sign off? That's it. Nope. nope. All I'm right. Just, I'm ready. Abby's ready. I just gonna, give me about two you're seconds. Cue it up? Just give me about two seconds here, and uh, I'll have something ready. It's just gonna. Oh, uh, the internet! God damn it! She was gonna do something. Gonna do something fun. That happens. All right, here it goes. I love it. Oh, cool! Hear, you guys are about to get rushified. So cool. Where does it come? Whenever you play music <laughs> on a fucking laptop. <gasps> All right. Guys. All right. Are you so just gonna watch favorite? a video now? Yeah. I'm no, gonna just watch leave it on. Well, well, it's I'm fine. not even gonna have it's dinner. Fine. It's fine. All right. For Abigail Gardner. That was not as... Jacob Walsh. My name is Craig Goldberg. I already did that once, but I wanted to tell you who we are again. Please make sure to follow us. Have some on all social media. We got a bunch of stuff coming up. We got Dragon Con coming up. And we got Patreon. Yes, have some. You don't want to miss it. We got fun shit planned. Yes. Seacrest out! Woo! Dreyfus out. Bye, guys. Dreyfus out. Dreyfus orgasm out. Hi, Richard Dreyfus here. I had one more story Hmm. before we sign off. When I was hired to do the movie Jaws, I told... I'm not going to do it. You got to wait for the bonus episode. Okay, bonus. You got to wait. Bonus. You got to wait. So, bon- hey, finished. guys, bonus episode is just Craig doing Richard Dreyfuss. Story. It is. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. It's going to be so easy. If I was bisexual <laughs> and I encountered... Robert Shaw in his hometown (laughs) of Liverpool. Uh, He's not from Liverpool, is he? It's not Liverpool. He was born in England, moved to Scotland as a child. Boom! Watch uh, watch Robert Shaw documentary! Boom! Robert Shaw! Bye, everybody. You too. All right. Bye, guys. Good night, guys. We're really leaving. Are we leaving? Are you guys still there? Are we still here? Is this a fake hangout? Oh my god, you guys need to go. Bye. I'm in so much trouble. I don't like hanging out. No, it's already late. Bye. Good night. Bye.